when you hear the words Global Education Compact, you probably first think of some United Nations program designed to get all the children of the world to be taught pretty much the same things about certain issues and topics. In a sane world, it might be a compact on the need to promote literacy and mathematics in the developing world, and to push those programs in the developed world, because those programs are hurting pretty badly here too. But in our age, those words can sound pretty ominous to those of us who don't have a lot of trust in what comes out of the Vatican anymore. And it was Francis who brought the issue of education around the world back to the forefront in a recent address to ambassadors and other diplomats at the Vatican last week, where he stressed the need for leaders to sign the Global Pact on Education. So let's have a look at this, because we'll soon be seeing more and more of this as 2020 stretches on. But first, I wanted to take a moment to thank the patrons of this channel. Your generosity has greatly helped this channel to grow and to keep these videos coming. If you want to become a patron, there are links to Patreon and Subscribestar in the description of this video, as, as well as other options. As always, I'm also taking submissions for the blog, returntotradition.org, with an email address for submissions also found in the description. This channel is supported by the viewers of this channel, so thank you for your support. And now... On to the news. The phrase, never let a crisis go to waste, is not one we typically associate with honest actors and people who generally have pure motives. All too often, that phrase gets used by people when a politician takes advantage of a crisis to push their agenda that might not otherwise be terribly popular. Unfortunately, it applies today in the most grotesque way possible. Francis delivered his address to diplomats last week and renewed his call for a global education compact and sold it in the light of the catastrophic news of the, on the abuse front in 2019. Yes, cover-up, predation, and the permissive attitude by the bishops and seminary rectors that led to teenage boys being preyed upon by men who are members of the James Martin Brigade is the crisis that Francis is now using to sell his global education compact and that is frankly astonishing. But that, but that's not the only astonishing part of all of this. So let's just cut to the chase and look what Francis said in his own words. Speaking on the issue of the kinds of abuse that led to the Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report, quote, Given the gravity of the harm involved, it becomes all the more urgent for adults not to abdicate their proper educational responsibilities, but to carry out those responsibilities with greater zeal in order to guide young people to spiritual, human, and social maturity. For this reason, I have planned a worldwide event to take place on the 14th of May, next with a theme, Reinventing the Global Compact on Education. End quote. There will be more from him, but I want you to consider what you just heard. Yes, you heard him say that the abuse crisis is combated with education. That sounds suspiciously like blaming the victim to me. But even better, the McCarrick crisis is now one of education. One where we as Catholics must assist in the efforts of globalism because men like McCarrick committed some heinous acts of evil. It's a truly bizarre thing to see coming from Francis. But there's more. There's always more. Remember how he pushed for a new humanism? Last fall I reported on the new humanism of Francis. A link to that video is in the pinned comment if you're looking at this on YouTube. At the time, Francis said, quote, a global education pact is needed to educate us in universal solidarity and a new humanism. End quote. Aside from universal human solidarity being a contradiction in terms when understood in the frame of Catholic social teaching, it's a rather ominous sounding turn of phrase. But it's meant to be. Here's some context from the Vatican's website on the global education co compact. Quote. Educating young people in fraternity and learning to overcome divisions and conflicts, promote hospitality, justice, and peace. Pope Francis has invited everyone who cares about the education of the young generation to sign a global pact, to create a global change of mentality through education. End quote. Aside from the word fraternity being used, which I never associate with Catholicism, but with, with the Lodge, remember how this was framed. In the McCarrick crisis, a crisis caused statistically over 80% by the presence of members of the James Martin Brigade in the priesthood, a crisis enabled by the permissive attitude among the bishops most characterized by the advocacy of Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church, and this is being used to push for a reform of Catholic education to be in sync with UN goals. 
We'll go over that in a moment, but there's more. According to Francis, quote, This gathering is meant to rekindle our commitment to and with young people, renewing our passion for a more open and inclusive education, including patient listening, constructive dialogue, and better mutual understanding. Never before has there been such need to unite our efforts in a broad educational alliance to form mature individuals capable of overcoming division and antagonism and to restore the fabric of relationships for the sake of a more fraternal humanity. All change, like the epochal change we are now experiencing, calls for a process of education and the creation of an educational village capable of forming a network of open human relationships. Education is not limited to school and university classrooms, but is principally ensured by strengthening and reinforcing the primary right of the family to educate and the right of churches and social communities to support and assist families in raising their children. End quote. There's more of that fraternal talk again, and I guess it takes a village. But this takes, a, and it's not just a village, but a global education village. Yeah, you see, there's a desperate need for education reform around the world. That is absolutely true. The test scores in the West testify to how bad it is here, as does the large amount of resources being spent by public schools to promote various forms of subversive propaganda, including bizarre gender ideology programs that can only be described as abusive, mutilative, and grooming in nature. But that's not what we're talking about here. Remember, this was framed in the McCarrick scandals, and the various cases of those crimes were not applicable to the quality of education students received, except maybe in one way that men who lived the San Francisco lifestyle were in the priesthood and shouldn't have been there or anywhere near a school. Beginning and end of discussion. And yes, even climate change was brought into this because we can't go a week without hearing about that ish issue. Francis made a reference to a, uh, shall we say, young girl whose name I can't mention in a critical way, but you know who I mean. The self-admitted girl with autism who travels the world with celebrities lecturing us on our carbon emissions and usually getting rides on carbon-spewing vehicles to, to get around. Francis referenced her and those like her when he pivoted to climate change, quoting the piece from LifeSite News. Quote, In his address to diplomats, Francis highlighted two key areas related to the global education pact, climate change and interreligious dialogue. He said that one of the places where many young people have become active in calling the attentive of political leaders to the issue of climate change, care for our common home ought to be a concern of everyone, not the object of ideological conflict between different views of reality, or much less between generations, he said. Young people are telling us that, at every level, we are being urgently challenged to protect our common home and to bring the whole human family together to seek a sustainable, integral development. They remind us of the urgent need for an ecological con conversion, which must be understood in an integral way, as a transformation of how we relate to our sisters and brothers, to other living beings, create in all its rich variety, and to the Creator who is the origin and source of all life, end quote. You know, hearing him say that, I don't really know who is supposed to be the target of this education. I mean, if we're supposed to listen to young people about this stuff, who is he talking about educating? But anyway, that piece goes on to recount the demonic push for the Abrahamic Religious Center being built that will house a church, a mosque, and a synagogue on the same grounds, and the evils of the document that spawned that effort. Interreligious dialogue may not seem relevant here, but believe me, it is. Also from LifeSite, they reported on a story that can only be described as the spread of the Pachymami virus, and it happened in Canada, in a public school. Headline, Christian mom loses court case against school that forced indigenous smudging ritual on kids. School required children to participate in a smudging ceremony, whereby smoke from burning sage was fanned over the classroom, furniture, and space occupied by children. That story is from the same day, and frankly, I don't really believe in coincidences with these sorts of things. I'll quote directly from the first two short paragraphs, which will be sufficient for our story here. Quote, British Columbia, January 9th, 2020. This report comes from Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. British Columbia's top court ruled yesterday that schools can require children to participate in religious or spiritual rituals, such as smudging ceremonies from First Nations cultures despite parental objections to the explicitly religious aspect of cleansing the spirits of children. In 2015, a Port Alberni school required children to participate in a smudging ceremony whereby smoke from burning sage was fanned over the classroom, furniture, and space occupied by children. 
In a letter to parents, the school claimed that this ritual took place for the express purposes of cleansing the children's spirits of negative energy. Later in the school year, a prayer was offered at a mandatory student assembly. End quote. Remember, the church must have an Amazon face. And remember, the reform of the church that is being called for now will be done through schools and requires interreligious dialogue, what we saw in the Vatican Gardens on the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, where the enthronement of Pachymami was begun. This story, out of Canada, is part and parcel of that effort. The Vatican rejected the call that it was idolatry on display, because, in their minds, all religions have something of value to offer and lead ultimately to God, because according to the Abu Dhabi statement, God permits a diversity of religions. Just ignore what St. Paul said about all the gods of the Gentiles being demons. Just ignore all that. But if interreligious dialogue is required to address climate change, then we must be fully tolerant of other religions due to the Catholic Church's history of, oh, how do these maniacs put it, imperialism and colonialism. So you'll probably never see Canadian public schools forcing students to go to even a Novus Ordo Mass, let alone an Eastern Rite liturgy or the traditional Latin Mass. But students from atheist and Christian families will be forced to participate in pagan rituals. If that doesn't sound like ideological indoctrination, then you're not paying attention. And this is part of the UN plan as well which Francis is promoting in his Global Compact. So let's look briefly at the UN plan because this will help bring this all together. In January 2012, the UN launched its Global Education Initiative, with the main launch beginning in 2015. It has many stated goals, some of them even laudable. The good goals include educating all children, promoting literacy, using education to promote peace, and to combat vaguely defined extremism, you know, that sort of thing. But the red flag gets raised when we see the goal that the UN has for its educational reform being fostering global citizenship, part of which is the promotion of the climate agenda. That sounds familiar? Well, it should. From the start, Francis has said that he wants the church and the UN to work more closely together. And in doing that, he's only continuing the work of Paul VI and John Paul II and working more closely with the United Nations. But this global education pact is that on steroids. It would promote these disordered values of religious dialogue and the rejection of proselytizing to the same people who are now pushing paganism and the elimination of natural sovereignty in the classroom. And let's not lose our minds here or forget, <laughs> we're talking about Catholic schools here. And of course, it would also be working with the same people who push the James Martin agenda and numerous other programs that have little to do with actual education. Have you noticed in all of this that there has been no mention of what the church envisions for education? Traditionally, a Catholic education is classical in nature, at least to some degree, seeking to bolster the mind through immersion in literacy and classic Christian literature, as well as math and history and, you know, religious education, and the rest that would accomplish the goal of making people truly better citizens, which isn't what the UN actually wants anyway, especially not critical thinking Christian citizens. That's about the last thing these people want, because if that is what the result was, we'd not have any further propagandizing of young people and vices and religious indifferentism. Instead, a truly Catholic global education compact would promote a virtue-based and faith-based Catholic education program instead of some thinly veiled program of promoting the UN's weird agenda. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments. I, for one, am astonished that Francis would use the McCarrick scandals to promote his own interreligious dialogue and climate change agenda. But maybe I'm a whack job. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.